In a time long past, there were magical beings whose main goal was to spread happiness across Earth. They dedicated themselves to capturing moments of joy and sent these moments to a special place known as Happiness Energy Management. This unique place absorbed all the positive feelings and then shared them with those who were feeling down or sad. However, during one particular year, a problem arose. The amount of happiness they collected was 20% less than the year before. This decline concerned the head of Happiness Energy Management. He believed that they all, especially Wei Wu, needed to make more efforts during the spring season to bring back the balance. Wei Wu, on the other hand, was exhausted. He began to feel that the head was taking advantage of his efforts and considered leaving the management altogether. The head of the Happiness Center caught wind of this and warned Wei Wu about the dire consequences, pointing out another deity who had faced problems when he thought of quitting. But in the midst of all this, a shimmer of hope emerged for Wei Wu. The god of good luck shared his secret with him. There was a way to find freedom during the spring festival. Hidden in his secret room was a key, and this key had the power to put an end to the festival and break the cycle. Determined, Wai Wu entered the mysterious room. Inside, he discovered multiple doors and chose the grandest of them all. Behind it, he found the elusive key and took it, hoping it might bring a change to his life and the happiness balance of the world. In the midst of all the commotion at the Happiness Energy Management Center, something unexpected happened. A plane suddenly appeared flying dangerously close to the building. The officers in charge barely caught it in time, quickly deciding to move the entire building out of the plane's path. This sudden shift caused a jolt that startled Wai Wu, making him accidentally drop the secret key. To his horror, it fell all the way down to Earth. Determined to get the key back, Wai Wu immediately descended to the planet. His journey didn't lead him directly to the key. Instead, he encountered the Earth God. The Earth God, having misconceptions, assumed Wai Wu had left his job at the Happiness Center. Instead of correcting him, Wai Wu fibbed, saying he was on a covert mission. As Wai Wu ventured forward, he was clueless about the location of the key. He ended up wandering aimlessly. Spotting a scooter left unattended by a child, he borrowed it, hoping it would aid in his quest. The following day, through the grapevine, Wai Wu learned of a young girl named Ming who had found the secret key. Desperate, he approached her and asked for its return, but Ming found it amusing to keep the powerful celestial being on his toes. She playfully ran off, prompting Wai Wu to give chase. Ming proved to be quite resourceful. She managed to dodge Wai Wu with the help of her grandma and their zippy rickshaw. No matter how hard he tried, Wai Wu seemed to always be one step behind. The chase led him into the heart of a bustling city, where Ming took refuge in her school. Wai Wu, in a desperate bid to retrieve the key, tried to enter the school. But instead of blending in, he drew attention to himself. The school security didn't take kindly to his antics and despite his best efforts, they promptly escorted him out, leaving him back at square one. Soon after his misadventure at the school, Wai Wu had an idea. He remembered he had a pet animal that had recently secured a job as a teacher at that very school. Wei Wu thought of a plan. He would take the animal's job identity and use it to gain access to the school. Walking up to the school gate, he showed the guards his animal's teaching credentials. They were taken aback by the authenticity of the documents, and without further questioning, allowed Wai Wu inside. Once inside, Wai Wu met with the principal. Putting on his best act, Wai Wu expressed his profound love and care for children, calling them the hope of the future. The principal was so moved by Wai Wu's words that he asked him to teach music to all the classes. Most of the students were thrilled to have Wai Wu as their music teacher. However, Ming wasn't fooled. She knew Wai Wu's real motive was to reclaim the secret key. As if things weren't complicated enough for Wai Wu, a new distraction arrived at the school, a famous piglet named Xiao Dong. Xiao Dong brought with him a peculiar device that, when activated, sprayed a substance that made all the children laugh uncontrollably. But this laughter wasn't genuine happiness. When officials from the Happiness Energy Management came to the school, they couldn't collect any happiness balls, confirming that the laughter was artificial. Shortly after the incident with Xiao Dong, the Earth God paid a visit to Wai Wu. He came with a message. The god of fortune was on the hunt for Wai Wu and wanted the secret key returned without delay. As the school day wrapped up, children eagerly awaited their parents for pickup. All except for Ming. Seizing the moment, Wai Wu approached her again, attempting to reclaim the secret key. But Ming, always one step ahead. Fein fainting only to hop onto her grandma's rickshaw, leaving Wai Wu once more empty-handed. Yet, Wai Wu wasn't one to give up. Stealthily, he followed Ming back to her home and discovered that she lived solely with her grandma. Observing from a distance, he saw Ming using the secret key to operate a music box. That night, once Ming was sound asleep, Wai Wu tried to sneak into her room to snatch the key. But Ming, ever alert, had anticipated this and swapped the key with a prickly cactus. 
Despite the previous night's mishap, Weibo resumed his role as a music teacher the next day. He devised a new strategy, winning Ming over with kindness. Whenever a question arose in class, he directed at Ming, praising her response regardless of its accuracy. However, his constant attention began to irritate Ming, causing her to grow distant and disinterested in Wai Wu's lessons. But Wai Wu, undeterred, continued to assist Ming and showered her with admiration, hoping to eventually win her trust and retrieve the secret key. One fine day, Wai Wu walked into his classroom bearing a gift meant for the most deserving student. To everyone's surprise, especially Dong's, the honor went to Ming. Feeling slighted, Dong, aware of his father's influential stature, called him in hopes of getting Wai Wu reprimanded or even fired. However, Wai Wu, displaying unexpected courage, stood his ground. He faced off against Dong's formidable father, defending Ming's merit in front of the school's principal. As evidence of her talent, Wai Wu promised a grand showcase of Ming singing at the upcoming Spring Festival. Ming, concerned about Wai Wu taking on such a powerful figure as Dong's father, warned him of the potential repercussions. Unknown to them, Dong's father was already hatching a plan with the God of Fortune, who provided him with a mysterious happiness spray. He tasked Dong's father with distributing this spray throughout the town before the Spring Festival. Feeling the weight of the impending festival and the challenges he faced, Wai Wu turned to the Earth God. He sought passage to the Sunset Red Club, a haven for former deities. He hoped these celestial beings could aid in creating a memorable performance for Ming during the Spring Festival. Once there, he introduced Ming to them and together, they conceptualized a rainforest-themed stage for her performance. The festival day dawned, buzzing with anticipation. The event commenced with Dong, flanked by robots developed by his father, delivering a riveting performance. But what followed was the highlight of the event. As Ming took the stage, her powerful voice resonated, leaving the audience spellbound. Their astonishment was further amplified as various deities from the Sunset Red Club enhanced her performance, adding a magical touch that made the entire evening unforgettable. The conclusion of the festival was filled with a mixture of emotions. Ming was overjoyed with her performance, which wouldn't have been possible without Wai Wu and the support of the gods from the Sunset Red Club. In gratitude, she handed Wai Wu the secret key coupled with a pair of earmuffs to shield him from the loud crackles of fireworks. Despite this joyous moment, Ming's spirits were dampened, due to her father's absence, a void that no accolade could fill. But, as if in answer to her sadness, her fellow students inspired by her performance began to bond with her, offering her camaraderie and solace. The genuine happiness emanating from this newfound friendship contributed to the happiness energy that Wai Wu was supposed to collect. However, the tranquility of the evening was disrupted by the abrupt appearance of the God of Fortune. He demanded that Wai Wu destroy the secret key, which would effectively erase the Spring Festival from existence. Wei Wu hesitated, recalling Ming's heart-wrenching confession about her father's visits only during the Spring Festival. If he complied, Ming would be condemned to a life without ever seeing her father. Realizing the weight of this decision, Wei Wu decided to protect the Spring Festival, infuriating the God of Fortune. In a swift motion, the God of Fortune seized the key from Wei Wu's hands, shattering it to pieces, revealing his manipulative intent all along. This revelation left Wai Wu deeply introspective about the events that had transpired. When the secret key was shattered, it set off a chain of events that turned the city into a wintry wonderland. This never-ending winter led to a wave of sadness and melancholy among the citizens. The god of fortune, having orchestrated this whole ordeal, used this widespread gloom to his advantage. His and Dong's father's invention, the happiness spray, became the only refuge for the crestfallen townspeople. But the spray was a mere facade of joy, a temporary solution. The artificial happiness it provided didn't release the genuine happiness balls that the celestial officers would typically gather. This whole scenario didn't sit well with the other gods. They were disappointed in Wai Wu for not being transparent from the get-go. Had he been honest about his motives and the entire situation, they could have intervened sooner and possibly prevented this calamity. Despite being blamed and shouldering the weight of the situation, Wai Wu was primarily concerned about Ming. He visited her school, only to discover that his secret that he was masquerading as a teacher had been unraveled. This led to his swift expulsion from the school premises. On his way out, he stumbled upon the leader of the Happiness Energy Management purchasing the deceptive happiness spray. The leader informed Wai Wu that the only way to reverse this icy spell was to restore the secret key to its rightful place in the secret chamber. In a twisted turn of events, Ming and Dong were seen reveling in the temporary joys provided by the happiness spray. Dong, with ulterior motives, lured Ming into the factory under the pretext of acquiring more sprays. Little did Ming know, it was a trap. They found themselves ensnared in the machinery of the production line, much to the amusement of the god of fortune and Dong's father, who were busy flaunting the success of their invention to the media. Wei Wu managed to infiltrate the factory, rescuing both Ming and Dong in the process. 
This act, however, did not sit well with the god of fortune, who retaliated by deploying a group of robots to pursue Wai Wu. Amidst the chaos, Dong's father came to their rescue, creating an escape path for them. Recognizing the need for additional assistance, Wai Wu sought Ming's trust once again and together they headed to a club where they hoped to rally other gods to their cause. In preparation for the impending battle, Wai Wu procured a set of powerful weapons from his workplace, the Happiness Energy Management Office. Witnessing his dedication and earnestness, the gods agreed to unite and challenge the God of Fortune within his factory stronghold. Once inside, they were confronted by the God of Fortune's defenses, a massive robot accompanied by several smaller counterparts. Yet, the combined strength and strategy of the gods allowed them to handle the smaller threats. During the intense standoff between Wai Wu Ming and the God of Fortune, they received valuable intelligence from Dong's father. He revealed the existence of a lever that could disable the giant robot. Acting swiftly, Wai Wu created a diversion, giving Ming the chance to approach and activate the lever. However, in a sudden twist, the God of Fortune captured Ming, escaping with her into the skies above. Out of nowhere, Ming's grandma appeared with her unique rickshaw, one that had the ability to soar into the sky. She pursued the flying robot, trying to save her granddaughter. Amidst the excitement, Wai Wu's earmuffs, which protected him from loud noises, were dislodged. Undeterred by the deafening sounds of firecrackers around him, he bravely jumped and stuck himself onto the robot. In a swift move, Wai Wu snatched the secret key dangling around the God of Fortune's neck. He then rescued Ming by leaping away from the robot. Although the God of Fortune managed to avoid any serious harm, he soon found himself cornered by the leader and his security team. The leader mentioned a peculiar thing. The current happiness and bond between Wai Wu and Ming had the power to magically mend the secret key. With the secret key in his possession, Wai Wu restored it to its rightful place. This act reopened the secret spring door, bringing back the joyous energy of happiness to the city. The spring festival resumed with everyone reveling in its joyous spirit. As for Wai Wu, he and the other gods returned to their roles in managing happiness. Ming had an extra reason to celebrate. Her father finally returned home. And on that high note, a story came to a close. The moral of the story is if someone swaps your key with a cactus, it's probably best to keep a singing grandma close by.